Hi Dollar Divas, welcome to Behind the Vanity, I'm Jessica. So today is Makeup and Celebrity Sunday. It has been a minute since I have done one of these and I'm super excited about today's because I am talking about Marilyn Monroe, one of the most famous people ever of all time, a legend, just, what more can I say? other than tell you a bunch of facts about her. So anyways, so we're gonna do just that and I'm gonna show you how I got this look. Um, a lot of the makeup is new to me makeup that I have had, that I have hauled in either some Dollar Tree hauls, some walkthroughs. If you are new to my channel, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is my series that is called Makeup and Celebrity Sunday. I basically, it's a get ready with me and I talk about all things celebrity, movie, TV, pop culture oriented. And I just do all different kinds of topics within that topic. <laughs> so all while putting on makeup. So if that sounds good to you, you're in the right place. And I also do a lot of Dollar Tree hauls, walkthroughs, affordable beauty content, all that kind of thing. So I do hope that you will subscribe and become what I like to call one of my dollar divas. And of course, if you are returning, thank you so much for coming on back for another Makeup and Celebrity Sunday. Sorry, it has taken me a couple weeks to put another one out, but I really like to be ready for these when I do them. So anyways, without any further chit chat, let's just go ahead and get into today's video. So we're gonna start with eyebrows as always, and I'm just using like my favorite brow product ever. It's the LA Colors Brow Pencil in Medium. If you are not new to my channel, this is definitely not a new thing you are seeing. So Marilyn Monroe was actually born Norma Jean Mortensen, and she was born on June 1st, 1926. Now she was later baptized as Norma Jean Baker. And she actually spent much of her childhood in and out of foster homes and orphanages. Her mother was severely mentally ill and was committed. So she was not really raised by her mother at all. And she never knew her father. And of course, both of these troubled relationships would cause problems throughout her entire life. In fact, Marilyn was always afraid that she was gonna end up like her mother. So oddly enough, she was born in 1926 and she died in August of 1962 at the age of 36. Actually, funny aside, I'm 36 and I think a few weeks ago, I can't really remember how it came up, but I think my mom asked me how old I was. Does, does anybody else's mom like ask them how old they are? Like, I don't know if that's normal or if that's just my family. So to clean up my eyebrows, I'm gonna be using the Mor this Morphe concealer. I got this like in an Ipsy glam bag some time ago. So I'm just gonna be using that to clean up my brows. I'm trying to use products I haven't used in a while. So I said to my mom, I said, oh, she asked how old I was. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm 36. I'm like, I'm the same age Marilyn Monroe was when she died. And she looked at me. That's all I said. That's all I said. She looked at me and she was like, you're cute, but you ain't no Marilyn Monroe. I'm like, I never said I was. <laughs> anyway, although I do have a friend that impersonates Marilyn Monroe professionally, which is really cool. One of my closest friends. So anyway, I digress. So her first marriage was actually kind of arranged. At the age of 15, she had been living with this family. It was like a family friend. And this was actually like the happiest part of her childhood. So she was living with this family and family friend named Grace Goddard. And at the age of 15, they were moving to West Virginia and they couldn't take Marilyn. Why, I don't know exactly, but they couldn't take her. She was devastated because this was literally like the happiest part of her childhood. And she this, this really affected her as well, the fact that they didn't want her enough to take her. So in an effort to not be put in another orphanage, at 15, they kind of arranged a marriage with her 20 year old neighbor. And his name was James Daughtry or Darty. And so they married. This would be her first marriage. Okay, so the brows are cleaned up. So I just did a video where I unboxed friend mail from my friend here on YouTube, Marina from Confessions of a Dollar Tree Addict. I will have her channel linked down below, as well as my previous video kind of unboxing all these goodies she sent me. It's all hard candy makeup from the Dollar Tree. I didn't get to use everything in my last video, so I'm gonna try to use a couple more items. So I get this little hard candy palette here, which is so pretty. I'm gonna try to use a couple shades out of it. 
This is the Top 10 Trendsetter Eyeshadow Collection in Raining Men. And then I've got this beautiful hard candy glitter palette. So I figure in kind of honor of Marilyn Monroe, this is the Glitterazzi glitter palette in center of attention. I would maybe use some pressed glitters. So we will see. So I'm gonna go into this shade right here. So for a stage name, Marilyn actually wanted the stage name Jean Adair, but ultimately she went with Marilyn Monroe. Monroe was actually her mother's maiden name. And then the name Marilyn came about because a studio executive, man, these eyeshadows are amazing by the way. This palette has all shimmers, but these, this is just going on so easy, just with a dry brush. Makes me want to try the shimmers with a wet brush. But studio executives thought she looked like actress Marilyn Miller, who actually, similar to Marilyn, actually died at age 37. So that's where the name Marilyn Monroe came from. I'm kind of just laying a little bit of like a smokiness kind of under this glitter, because glitter kind of goes on top of stuff and then you really can't see anything underneath it anyway. So I'm just trying to lay down like a bit of like a smokiness. This is probably gonna be a pretty dramatic look, to be quite honest. I'm gonna try one of these shimmers just out of curiosity and then put glitter on top of it. I'm gonna go into this shade right here and I am gonna wet my brush. So like I mentioned earlier, Marilyn did not have a close relationship with her mom, never knew her dad, and her mom also, wow, that is amazing. So her mom lived in this institution, you know, she was committed and because you know she wasn't really close to her mother at all, when her mother would tell people in the facility that she was Marilyn Monroe's mother, you know, after Marilyn got famous, of course, they didn't believe her. You know, I mean, they just were like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I guess who could blame them? But you know, she wasn't lying. You know. Okay, this palette is absolutely amazing. The two shades I've used, like I said, I'm gonna end up covering this in glitter. I want to blend that a little bit better. So I think I'm just going to go into this like iridescent kind of holographic glitter. And I don't think I've actually used this on my channel yet, but I've shown this to you. It is a silicone like glitter. It, you use it for like shimmers and pressed glitters and all that good stuff. And I think I've shared it in a favorites video, but I've never used it. So I'm going to pick up some of this glitter. So Marilyn actually often referred to Marilyn Monroe in the third person. Like when she was seen criticizing like her movies or like footage of herself, you know, as Marilyn, she would say, you know, she and her, you know, she didn't hit her mark or whatnot. So she didn't really consider herself Marilyn Monroe, I guess you could say. She realized it was a character that she kind of put on. That is really pretty. Hard Candy has some amazing pressed glitters. You can actually see, I've really dug into that and it's still glitter underneath. It's not just like a surface level thing. They have amazing glitters. And I might not be done with that. I'm gonna kind of add liner and lashes as always and then move on and then come back to the eyes as we always do. So we're just gonna leave that for the moment and come back and finish. So let's move on to eyeliner. This is another product that I had and I kind of messed up using it the other day in my video. So this is the Hard Candy Stroke of Gorgeous Kajal Supreme, I don't know if it's Kajal or Kajal Supreme Eyeliner Duo. It's a liquid liner and a pencil liner. So I'm gonna use the liquid side. I, I just only swatched this part of it the other day. I didn't actually get to use it. I'm gonna use the pencil like in the waterline. I'm gonna use the liquid to make like a wing. So I recently, in a Makeup and Celebrity Sunday video, I did a topic where it was like second choice celebrities like for movie roles, like actors or actresses that weren't the first choice. And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, I can't really remember, but Marilyn Monroe was actually the first choice for the role in Breakfast at Tiffany's that of course so famously went to Audrey Hepburn. Apparently an acting coach she had at the time didn't think it was the right role for her, but apparently she did film two scenes in the movie, so I thought that was super interesting. I'm gonna clean off under my eyes just a bit. So for under my lashes, I'm gonna use, I actually just purchased this couple days ago, it's the Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. I've been trying to use and try more Essence products, and I'm just gonna use this for under my lashes, so I'm just gonna apply like a coat of this. So, you know, even though Marilyn was a very experienced, very experienced in front of the camera, you know, both photographs and film, 
in movies and stuff, she was never really quite comfortable. She would tech, make a lot of technical mistakes, and apparently in photograph, you know, in photographs, she was the most comfortable. Like she knew exactly how to move her body to get the shot, you know. But not so much when she was in moving film. And so, like I said, she made a lot of technical mistakes, and a lot of it was actually chalked up to actually a lack of confidence. So, you know, even Marilyn Monroe struggled with confidence. So I'm gonna use these again. These are the LA Colors Dramatilash False Lashes. These are in dashing. I use these in my Get Ready With Me, my last Get Ready With Me, and I really, really like these lashes. I love the Ionis from the Dollar Tree. I really like these too. Definitely two of my favorites. They get some other more natural styles of these, but the, this is definitely my favorite style. Then I'm just gonna use my Ioni Lash Glue. Ioni has actually come out with some other makeup. I haven't yet seen it at my local Dollar Tree, but I know my friend Tasha St. James, um, I'll have her channel linked down below. I think she got her hands on some of the new makeup. And yeah, I'm definitely keeping an eye out. So kind of a beauty secret from Marilyn. You know, back around that time, they didn't have the excess of products like we have today to create effects but it doesn't mean that you know stars and celebrities like Marilyn, Marilyn didn't have their own tricks to achieve certain things you know now we just have products for them but from what I understand she would layer either Nivea cream or Vaseline on her face because it made her look luminous on film and you know unlike right now we all love to be tan luckily now I feel like we can be tan or not it's both are embraced I mean there was a time where like you had to be tan, like I'm tan right now, but but you know, you had to be really tan, you know? You had to have a sun kiss glow, self tanner, of course the tanning bed era and everything. And but she didn't like to be tan. She liked, you know, she just didn't think it the sun or anything did any good for your skin. And in a lot of ways she's right, you know, to you know, just embrace the shade that you are, whatever that is, light or dark, and try not to do anything to hurt your skin and to take care of it. But she didn't like to be tan, mainly because apparently she had said, allegedly had said that she didn't like to be tan because she liked to feel blonde all over. <laughs> it's actually something my friend talks about. She, my friend that impersonates Marilyn, she loves to be tan. And so that was always a struggle because to do her character, it was better that she wasn't tan. You know, and you can only do so much with makeup, especially when it comes to your body. and. All that stuff you know so lashes are on we're gonna move on to the face and then we will finish off the eyes and all that good stuff so I like I said I do have some new to me makeup today and one of these things is this was in a recent Dollar General walkthrough I'll have that linked down below as well as my entire makeup and celebrity playlist and all that good stuff but I got this wet and wild photo focus foundation in soft beige and I've been hearing great things about this and I'd never tried it so I went ahead and picked it up when I repurchased my beloved Believe Beauty foundation. What I love about this is it has kind of a doe foot, it's a, it's a plastic applicator and I actually in my last video all that stuff that my friend gave me in friend mail, the foundation, it was a hard candy foundation and it had a doe foot which was such an amazing method of applying makeup. I just love this. So I kind of think everything now should have this. <laughs> so Marilyn, you know, had a, had a history with men, you know, as we all know. And she was actually particularly attracted to intellectual men and older men. So she was roommates with the actress Shelley Winters. And apparently they had made a list of men they'd like to sleep with. And her friend, after she had passed, her friend said she doesn't really know how many men that Marilyn actually ended up sleeping with on that list but on the list was Albert Einstein so you can so she definitely had a thing for smart men because he probably wouldn't be on many women's lists like no offense to him and everything but you know what I mean it is kind of a um, it would have been an odd couple I guess you could say so now I'm gonna use more of this Morphe concealer under my eyes this concealer is a lot darker than I normally wear, but my skin's also a little bit like darker than it normally is too. Normally I do favor my concealers on the lighter side, but I wanted to use something I hadn't really used in a while. So apparently this can be verified online. Apparently this was true. So the FBI actually had a file on Marilyn and it was all because of her relationship with Arthur Miller which of course she was married to, it was her 
third husband. It was due to Arthur Miller's un-American activities. What they were exactly, I'm not sure, but apparently there was a file with the FBI with Marilyn because she was tied to him. So my bronzer is not new, but my blush and my highlighter are. For bronzer, I'm just gonna go in with this Believe Beauty in the Tropics bronzing powder. This is in Hawaiian Glow. I'm gonna be using a Believe Beauty blush that I purchased in that same Dollar General walkthrough. Let me just go in with this. So even though, you know, Marilyn was a, a big star, she only ever owned one house. And it was actually the home that she passed away in, in Brentwood, California. It was a modest hacienda style house. You know, nice, but nothing too extravagant. And after her death, about 10 years after her death, it was purchased by a couple. And they were apparently actors and famous in their own right. And their names are Michael Irving and Veronica Hamill. So after they purchased her home, this was in the early 70s, so about 10 years after she passed away, they claimed that they found a very sophisticated government grade phone taping device throughout the home. You know, I mean, I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories about her death. It was either staged as a drug overdose or it was an accidental drug overdose or it was a suicide, you know, and of course all the dealings with the president and all that stuff, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's, it's, I don't know how true that is, but that is what they allege. So now for my blush, I got this on sale at the Dollar General that day for $3.55. I actually bought two. And this is the Believe Beauty Born to Blush in Fancy Plum. And I've only swatched it. I have not yet used it. You know, and of course, Marilyn was, you know, this blonde bombshell. And people didn't always give her a lot of credit for being smart. But she loved to read. And she actually had a very impressive... Oh, this is really pretty. It's a little bit like the one that I have from Wet n Wild that I love from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna try to clean off my brush a little bit and spread this around. It's kind of like a fuchsia. It's got a little bit of shimmer in it. I probably went a little too heavy, but that's okay. We'll fix it. And I feel like this is widely known, but just in case it isn't, she's really kind of credited with helping move Ella Fitzgerald, you know, the great jazz singer, moving her career forward because there was a big club, and I might say this name wrong, the Mokambo Club. And at the time, and it's been rumored that it was due to Ella's race, but apparently it wasn't because they had let Eartha Kitt and Dorothy Dandridge perform there. Apparently it was that the, the club owner thought that Ella wasn't glamorous enough, but Marilyn Monroe was a huge fan of Ella Fitzgerald. So what Marilyn did was she agreed that if they booked Ella, that she would be in the front row of her shows every single night, and she kept her promise. So Ella Fitzgerald had been quoted saying something to the effect that, you know, Marilyn was a very unusual woman and very ahead of her time, and she didn't even realize it. So I'm gonna use this, I've had this for a while, I got this at the Dollar Tree, but this is the, which I do have an entire Dollar Tree playlist. I will link down below with hauls and tutorials and all that good stuff if you're interested in that. But this is the Wet n Wild Mega Cushion Highlighter. And I have a lot of these products and foundations. I've got color correctors and all that good stuff. So of course it comes with a little puff, which is not terrible, honestly. And it's got this highlighter. So I'm gonna go in with this today and just kind of see. That's pretty. I feel like it applies really nice with just a finger. So so that gold dress that she so famously wore when she sang happy birthday to JFK is one of, if not the most expensive piece of clothing ever sold. It was sold at auction to a collector for like way over a million dollars. It was actually $1,267,500, which is crazy. And then the white dress that she wore in the seven year itch, you know, sold for 4.6 million. And that was in 2011. In some ways I would have thought the, the white dress would have sold for more, but I guess, you know, the gold one might be even more scandalous. So Frank Sinatra gave her a Maltese puppy or dog, and it was named Moff. I guess that's how you say it, say it, M-A-F. That was short for Mafia, honey. <laughs> of course, you know, a nod to Frank Sinatra's alleged, you know, Mafia ties and all that stuff. And when she passed away, the dog ended up going into the care of Frank's secretary. And there was actually a book written from the dog's perspective, and it's entitled, I'm gonna read this because I'll mess it up, The Life and Opinions of Moff, the Dog. 
and his friend Marilyn Monroe. It was from Moff's perspective and it was like a fictional book, which I had no idea. I really like this highlighter. It really applied very easy with a finger. That would be great to travel with because you don't need much more than just that right there. Super nice. So now I'm gonna go in and finish the eyes. I'm gonna use the pencil part of this liner, which is really, really interesting. I'm gonna go in on my waterline. This is really a nice, again, another great vacation item because you get your liquid liner, you get your pencil liner, and both are wonderful. This is a wonderful pencil liner. Lines the waterline, awesome, just super good. So of course, Marilyn's second marriage was to Joe DiMaggio, and they were only married for eight months, which is crazy. It seems like it would have been longer than that. And you know, their marriage came to a head actually at the speaking of the white dress came to a head at that when they were filming that scene which it all went for nothing because apparently the audio or something was not good they ended up having to get rid of that footage and film it in like a sound studio somewhere but apparently that scene absolutely enraged joe and apparently he beat her that night i don't know it was i think it might have even been the first time but anyway that really led to the downfall of their marriage and she ended up divorcing him on the grounds of mental cruelty. I mean, that's like severe, you know what I mean? But after they divorced, he was always there for her. They remained good friends, even so that Joe actually made the arrangements and kind of took control of Marilyn's funeral. And he didn't want any of the people in Hollywood at her funeral because he felt that if it weren't for them, she would still be alive. So twice a week for 20 years, he had roses sent to her grave. So I'm gonna go under my eyes with this shade right here, and then we'll do something fun for the inner corner. I don't know, maybe more glitter. So Warren Beatty saw Marilyn the day before she died, and they had a lovely walk on the beach. And he described it as being not so much romantic, but very intellectual and lovely. They were up at a party and she asked him if he would take a walk on the beach with her. And Warren Beatty was actually JFK's brother-in-law. So I guess that connection there would, you know, that would be the connection. And Marilyn is actually, you know, she, when she passed away, her estate was worth 20 million, which is like great. Like there's, that's nothing to sneeze at, but she's worth much more since her passing. And apparently it's like her estate earns like 30 million a year, which is crazy. So Marilyn was kind of often shortchanged a bit. Like for instance, Elizabeth Taylor would get a million dollars for like Cleopatra, like for one movie. Marilyn would earn that, but she'd have to do two movies. You know, unfair, but happens all the time. I'm gonna put a little bit of that glitter on the inner corner. I never said this look would be subtle. And then I wanna put a little bit of like an under the brow bone highlight, so I'm gonna do this shade right here, which I've only swatched. So I'm just gonna put a little, little pop of this, and then I'm gonna blend it. So for lips, um, this is actually a hard candy lip product. I purchased some time back and haven't really used. I've just tried it, like swatched it. And then this is just an old lip liner. This is from Jordana, which I don't even think exists anymore. It's the easy liner for lips. This is in Plush Plum. I'm gonna line my lips with that and then I'm gonna use this, found it at the Dollar Tree. It's the Hard Candy Glitterazzi Crystal Lip Duo. This is in Sparkling Spice. So I do glitter lips like often, like for the stage and stuff. And I actually have a tutorial I'll have linked down below. Um, I don't know that this works quite as good in my swatching of it, but we're gonna use it today. So although Marilyn Monroe graced the very first cover of Playboy magazine, her and Hugh never met, which is such a shame. I just feel like they should have met, you know what I mean? But Hugh bought the plot right next to her for when he passed away. He wanted to be buried near her. So he bought it. He paid $75,000 for this plot in 1992, and that is in fact where he is. So he is next to Marilyn Monroe for all of eternity. So I'm gonna first swatch these and see what I need to do. I might just use the lip gloss part. So here are the swatches. This is the gloss side, and then this is the lipstick side. I did it twice because one side, the glitter has been, from swatching it, the glitter doesn't really go all the way through, although both swatches really look very similar. I think I'm gonna do the lip gloss side. So yeah, more about you know Marilyn being on the first cover of Playboy. Hugh had bought the pictures. It was a time where he wasn't actually, he didn't have a crew that took pictures of girls like he ended up getting later on in the production of the Playboy 
magazine, he had purchased them. And of course, those photos were taken really before she was famous. But yeah, those were not taken by Hef and his, you know, team like in later years. He purchased those. I overlined. Oh my God. I overlined quite a bit, but I tried to fix it a little bit, but everything is a lot. I am wearing a very glamorous look in honor of Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> but yeah, I really like the gloss. It's um, not sticky and it feels really smooth. And so yeah, I'm happy. I love, of course, I love their pressed glitters. This palette is amazing. Enjoy the foundation. I really like the way it looks on my skin. The highlighter is really nice as well. And yeah, this blush is very similar to one that I found at the Dollar Tree. Of course, you can't go wrong with Believe Beauty. All their stuff is amazing, super affordable, even more affordable than the drugstore. Just, you can't go wrong. So I hope that you enjoyed another Makeup and Celebrity Sunday. Of course, this time featuring probably one of the most famous people of all time, the bombshell sex symbol of all bombshells and sex symbols, the legend, Miss Marilyn Monroe. We all love her, we all know her. So yeah, I'm really excited that I got to make this video today. It had been a long time coming. If you did enjoy this video, show me you did by hitting that like button. Like I said, I will have my entire Makeup and Celebrity Sunday playlist linked down below so you can binge watch more videos like this. I will also have my video of my friend mail to, so you can see more hard candy makeup from the Dollar Tree that I received from my friend, as well as my Dollar Tree Makeup and Haul playlist. Just check out the description box and binge watch whatever videos look good to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.